Climate change impacts all living beings on the planet, and marine life is no exception. A new study finds that rising summer temperatures pose a threat to triploid oysters. Now, this type of oyster was specifically bred in the 1970s to be more resilient to harsher environments. But despite that, researchers found that triploids die nearly two and a half times faster than other oysters, known as diploids, when under heat stress. Neil Thompson joins us now. He's a geneticist for the U.S. Department of Agricultural Research Service. So thank you for being here. As my producers know, I personally don't like eating oysters, but tell us more about the important role that they play in marine ecosystems. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, first and foremost. So oysters are important ecosystem engineers. They provide numbers of different services. First and foremost, they clean their environment. So because they're filtering food out from the water, they're cleaning that water around them. Additionally, they're building net reefs naturally, and they're providing habitat complexity that other animals in the ecosystem can use. Additionally, those natural reefs, they also provide um, resilience from coastal storms. Well, so talk to us about this new study and the findings. Mm -hmm. Does it suggest that people should stop eating oysters altogether? Is it better to eat them in colder seasons, given that they're being affected by climate change? What's your advice? Yeah, so seasonal change with oysters is completely natural and to be expected. Um, oysters becoming mature in the summer is entirely natural. It's part of their natural reproductive and life history process. And so if people enjoy the taste of summer oysters, there's no reason to not enjoy them. Uh, you know, personally, I love ice cream. You can kind of ask the same question about <laughs> ice cream and only eating it during the summer. I don't want to eat ice cream just during the summer. I, I want to enjoy it 12 months of the year. Well, it's good to know that, that you're saying that despite these changes and the effect that it's having on oysters, that you can continue to eat them safely throughout the year. Um, but I actually understand that you're working to selectively breed a more resistant uh, diploid, disease resistant, um, and, uh, and you're also trying to then breed triploids as well. Talk to us about this whole process. Yeah, so it's a fun project. So we're, as the USDA, inheriting uh, the Molluscan Broodstock Program, which was originally started by Oregon State University. And so this project has a population of Pacific oysters, which is the main commodity on the West Coast for um, the shellfish aquaculture industry. And that program was breeding for growth and survival. Now, with the USDA program, we're sort of turning to a very specific oyster pathogen. It's not a human pathogen, so there's no risk to the consumer. But the oyster pathogen, when it becomes established, can kill up to 75% of the animals on the farm. And so right now, that pathogen is in an estuary in Southern California, but it's really localized. So what industry wants to do, and my program is attempting to do, is really get out ahead of the potential expansion of that pathogen up and down the coast. So we're trying to breed using classic genetic selection techniques, just improve survival in our population so that if and when that pathogen does expand its range, the Pacific Coast industry is ready with a population of oysters that will have higher survival, hopefully. So the, I'm, I'm finding this fascinating, despite my resistance to eating the bivalves, or I guess they're bivalves, right? <laughs> my, Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, when, you're, when you're going through this, this breeding process, what are really the ideal traits uh, that you're trying to to incorporate into these oysters for survival given climate change? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, when I talk to industry, their biggest uh, desire is a resilient oyster. And what that really boils down to is survival, as you mentioned. Now, identifying what traits actually influence survival in the wild is really difficult because nothing acts in isolation. So temperatures right. change, ocean, ocean acidification, excuse me, occurs. So pH changes, um, harmful algal blooms come and go. So there's a number of different factors that change in the estuary environment. That being said, we are working on this disease tolerance trait, which we know has an effect on survival when that pathogen's present. And hopefully once we make a bit of progress on that, we'll be able to tackle some of these sort of broader, grander environmental tolerance traits. And I will say that we are you know, conducting and developing collaborative research here and now to begin to sort of tease apart what that trait or what that phenotype might be. That's really interesting, especially given the important role that they play in cleaning uh, the water sources that they're in. Neil Thompson, thank you. 
Thanks.